Um, thanks for coming. My name's Caitlin Glass. Nice to meet y'all. <laughs> um, I know this lovely crew down here. It's my Oron host club, my own personal host club. You can follow me. <laughs> um, well, I know that maybe you Hawaiian folk don't get out to conventions much, so I'll do like the spiel here at the beginning. Hey, what about Vermont folks? And Vermont folks. I've never been to Vermont. I don't think. I would like to come. Uh, and then we'll do question and answer, and we've got an hour, and it'll be good times. Hooray! Um, so my name is Caitlin Glass. I said that already, and you probably knew that. That's why you are in the room right now. I am not Travis Willingham, although my badge does say that this is the Travis Willingham panel, but it's not. His is next. Technically, it's the uh, really but, but I get confused. When I wake up in the morning and I look at myself and I'm like, is that Travis? <laughs> no, no, it's me. Uh, so anyway, uh, primarily I am a voice actress and ADR director for Funimation Entertainment. Most people know me as Winry from Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Lots of other people may know me as Haruhi Fujioka from Oran High School Coach. <laughs> uh, other stuff I'm known for, gosh, I mean, Gunslinger Girl, I play Triella, uh, Yakimo in School Rumble. Salty! Oh, thank you, Excella and Salty Ray. I've been in Burst Angel and Black Cat and... Who are you? Who am I in Burst Angel? I'm Takane. In Black Cat, I play Saya. Oh. In Spiral, I play Hiono. Yeah. Um, not too long ago, I did a little show for ADV called Canon. So that was a cool thing to be a part of, or Canon, however the heck you pronounce it. Canon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, apparently, it's <laughs> Canon. The fans have spoken. Um, so that's some of the stuff I've been in. I'm also an ADR director. Uh, most recently, I directed, uh, most people know, Oran High School Host Club. Woo! And. Uh, other things I've worked on include Suzuka, the new uh, Funimation's new One Piece. I also play Vivi in One Piece. Uh, oh, Princess Vivi. Vivi. Oh. And uh, what else? I've directed Gunslinger Girl Season 2, which comes out at some point this year. And a really cool show called Murder Princess that also comes out in a few weeks. So, um, yeah, new stuff. New stuff. Oh, and uh, oh, a show that I'm in. I'll Stop the shameless self-promotion in a moment. A uh, really awesome show. It's the thing I've been the most excited about since Moron is a show called Heroic Age. And uh, you can watch the first four episodes on Hulu for free. Yay! Free anime! Yes! Um, I play Dianela, who is a princess, and it's a really awesome, big, epic, space, opera, amazing show. There's no singing, it's just big, so big like opera, and it's amazing and awesome, and I cannot say enough wonderful things about it, so check out Heroic Age. Cool. Um, what else can I talk about? What did I just, Claymore that's it. Right I, okay, I am in Claymore, I am in, uh, I play Deneva. I am in Deep Gray Man, which just came out a couple weeks ago. I play Lala, and I think you can see those episodes for free also, Funimation.com, free anime. Bacano. And Bacano. Oh my gosh, you've seen Bacano. You have. You're dressed as someone from Bacano. No one knows who I am, so it's. Just... Well, let me see. Um, you have a bow tie. Are you Chesla? Yeah. Okay, okay. Good job. That's a great show, too. Watch Bacano if you're old enough. It's violent. Okay. Violent. <laughs> um, uh, Claymore isn't. Yeah, yeah, don't watch Claymore either unless you're old enough. Violent. Um, why don't I just let you guys ask me stuff? I've been up a long time. <laughs> so I could probably just talk and talk, but I want to answer the questions you want me to. So, yes, ma'am, right here. Can you see in Winry's voice that it is a sexy shrimp? <laughs> um, I guess I could try. You know what I think? I think that Edward is a sexy shrimp. <laughs> Apparently, excuse me, because I need 12 videos of it on YouTube, but not just one. No, it's either 12 videos or YouTube, or we have to say it Is this going to be the line that people are going to ask me to say from now on until forever? Hmm. You got, you got Laura to say it? Oh, okay, well then I have to.
to. Okay, are you guys ready? <laughs> um, sure. Are you ready? Why don't y'all just count to three so I'll know when to go? Everybody, one, one two, three. Mike here. Oh, yeah, you nice. line up and oh, ask her no question. That's great. And to be fair to everyone, one question. No follow-ups. No additions. Just one question. And then you know, so, get yeah. back in line if you have another yeah. question. Yeah, this start is good. In so line right here. Yeah, if you have a question, come, come up to the front. Up start a line. Come, here. come on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Okay. Um, be nice to each other. No cutting. Um, yeah. This way, everybody can hear your questions. Would you sing Saya's song from Black Hat? Would I sing Saya's song from Black Hat? Would you sing the Star Spangled Banner? Would you sing? I can sure try if I can remember all the words. It's something like, Sing a song unto the world, flying high the clouds unfurl, and the flames into the past. Here now our lives will last. We'll character I've ever played is Haruhi Fujioka. Woo! And that's what she sounds like. <laughs> yes. How did you get involved in voice acting and get hired? How did I get involved in voice acting and get hired? I was already an actress. That's already what I was doing. Uh, in college, studying theater. I was about to graduate. I had a few more months left. And I got a tour at Funimation that uh, my friend gave me because he already worked there. And at the tour, I met a director who put me in a booth on the spot, made me say some things, and when I came out, he gave me a job. <laughs> uh, it does not work that way for everyone. A lot of us do fall into it, but primarily we are actors to begin with. We already have the training. Um, and then you learn the special skill set for anime dubbing once you get the gig. So I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, <laughs> That's how, that's how it happened. Now once you get cast in, in something or Funimation is interested in you, you still have to audition for every new show that comes along. It's not a guaranteed forever employment. It isn't even really employment, it's contract work. So you've got the job as long as your character is alive and the show lasts. And then you start all over again. So that's how I got started. Yes, sir. Question about the um, uh, at the end of the bloopers for the second half of the Orin host club, uh -huh. the host club. Um, did you guys just ad lib everything together for that one last scene, or whose idea was it to bring it up? Was it okay? So it was um, some of you, I'm gonna stay away from this mic. I think it might be me feeding back. Is it me? Okay. Okay, um, some of you may not have a clue what he's talking about, but on the discs for Oran High School Host Club, there are bloopers. And um, the second uh, set, which is the second half of the season, uh, there's th this scene in the very last episode, and if you haven't seen it, I'm going to do my best to not spoil things. But in the actual episode, it shows Haruhi and the other host club members dancing and doing things. And they're not talking. You're listening to other characters uh, talk uh, elsewhere. And I thought, gosh, it would be fun to know what is going through all of their heads and, and what they're doing. So it was my idea. 
because I love Oran so much, so it was kind of like a last hurrah for all of us. And it was the last thing that everybody did. After they recorded, I said, okay, now we're going to go back and do this scene again and do something right here. Like whatever you think Hikaru might be doing or saying that, that goes along with what's already been animated. So, and then we just kind of put them all together. I think the last person to record might have, might have been Vic. Either Vic or uh, J. Michael Tatum, who played Kyoya. Oh, no! Or me! I was last! I went last! <laughs> because I told everybody else what to do, like, be funny, say this, no, that's not funny, do this instead. Okay, good, we're good. So, it was a blooper, but it was almost like, you know when you get uh, DVDs and they show the deleted scenes or the alternate oh, ending, you know? Yeah. That's what I wanted it to feel more like, so uh, hopefully we accomplished that. There's some great one-liners in there, like, uh, I'm breathing fire, Kyoya, this is the fire of my anger. I, I am the demon king or something like that. Some really great Gosh, stuff. There, so no. check it out. If you don't have Oran, A, go buy it. B, if you're broke, I understand. I think the bloopers are up on YouTube. They shouldn't be, but I think they're there. <laughs> you can check them out. <laughs> so good question. Yes, ma'am. Um, all right. Um, first of all, I'd like to say uh, all your work is awesome. I love seeing you best. But, um, um, in an issue of Anime Insider, uh -huh. you said um, uh, that since Winry couldn't have Ed at the end of the series, since he was in the other world, that you would have her marry Jean Havoc. Uh -huh. Do you have a crush on Jean? <laughs> <laughs> I just think, I feel bad for poor Havoc. He never seems to get the girl. Winry never seems to get the guy. These two need to get together, but he has to quit smoking first. These are the rules. <laughs> I know who is the most like her, and that's Kyoya. Um, so if you are of the mind that like people go together, then I would say the two of them. Um, but if you're in, of the mind that opposite people should go together, then I guess her and Tamaki are pretty opposite. <laughs> um, but I don't know that she could be with someone who's so much like her father. That's just weird. <laughs> you know? Except that he doesn't, you know, dress as a woman, except that one time. <laughs> but uh, I think Kyoya, yeah, I think she seems the most interested in him as a person. But it's what, what I love about the show is there is so much possibility for everybody who's watching it to just imagine what they want to about Haruki and whoever. Uh, because she's kind of oblivious to that whole romantic side of life. I think if there were a season two, they'd start delving into that some more, but season one is all about her just learning how to have friends, you know? So, and enjoy herself. Thank you. You're welcome. First of all, thank you for spearheading the reproduction of Oran because I swear to Kamisama that my fiance will not stop playing the which one is Hikuru game with her best friend. But um, you mentioned that um, what you do is contract work. I was wondering what y'all do in between to. Oh, so, uh, well, I direct personally, that's what I do. I know if I was not also ADR directing for Funimation, I couldn't pay the bills solely on voice acting. Brina seems to think that I could. She's like, if you just quit directing, you'd get more voice work, but I'm a little afraid to do that in this economy. And I like directing. It's totally fun. So it's wearing seven hats. And yeah, so that's what I do. And a lot of us do multiple things around Funimation. Other people uh, write uh, or adapt. It, it is writing, but you know, it's, it's adapting the translation to fit the animation flaps. So I direct and I voice act. Um, other things I, I've done, there was a time when I had three or four jobs at once. I was Wonder Woman at Six Flags for a time. <laughs> and um, um, there are pictures online, yeah. And um, see, I've worked for other entertainment companies that you know aren't anime, just as um, all kinds of stuff. So a lot of us have agents and just have other work besides voice acting. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, uh, when you do directing, do you have to deal with voice actors making bombs? Um, yeah, we do. Uh, you mean by like leaving a joke line in there for somebody else? No, I mean like where they would say something completely obscene, but they'd make it um, uh, match okay. the lip flaps. Mm, like sometimes, uh, but yes, we deal with stuff like that all the time. You say deal with it like I get 
angry and throw things at them when they do that. I don't. I mean, it's a hard job, you guys. It's sure. hard. You're stuck in a little booth or just a slightly bigger than a little booth, and you just it, you're there and you have to stay so focused. Um, so it's good to have fun. It's fine. Just let them do whatever they're going to do so long as they give me the reads that I want and make it happen besides the fooling around, then okay. And so we encourage stuff like that sometimes. Like we'll work really hard to get a line right and then at the end say, okay, now let's do a goofy one and leave a joke in there for whoever's coming in to record next. We do it a lot. <laughs> yes? Um, as a voice actress, uh, how do you determine like what kind of voice to use for a certain character? Like how do you create their voice and it make it fit for them? Okay. Um, well, the beginning of forming a character starts back at like the audition stage. We come in and we're going to audition for the show and we get this binder full of uh, audition sides and it just has a little tiny picture and maybe a couple of sentences about them and like five things that they say and that's it. Maybe if we've had the time we could have done some research online to find out more about the show. Hopefully we didn't download anything illegally. <laughs> um, but I don't have time to research shows anymore so we just come in and go okay, uh, this girl. And so we take the information that's given to us and hopefully somewhere in there is something about their age. That's a big thing. Um, figure out what their age is and then determine the pitch. That's always my first thing. How old are they? How high or low should their voice be? And then everything else is more about their circumstances. And that to me is what determines the characteristics of their voice. And there's information in the, you know, the couple sentences like she's perky. She's a cheerleader, or she's totally emo goth girl. Um, so uh, it's just sometimes I'll draw off of, I'll believe it or not, other actresses, other anime that I've seen. Because you guys know, if you've seen enough anime, there are characters, the same kind of characters in every show. That's just how it works, and it isn't necessarily a bad thing. So if you can identify, that's the smart one, that's the pretty one, that's the bimbo, that's the, you know, whatever, then you go, okay, it's going to be this kind of voice, and, um, and go from there. But then, I also think of, okay, well, so-and-so is really good at that kind of voice, so I need to do something different to make what my, I'm doing stand out from them. So that's where it starts. And you go in an audition, and you present that to a director. Maybe they do choose you for the role. Then when you come in, they may want to change a little bit of what you started with at the audition because they know everything about the character, and I know three sentences. So, and they'll just kind of tell you, I need it to be scratchier, I need it to be younger, breathier, sweeter, whatever, and uh, you go from there. Thanks. Yep. Uh, have Have you ever w worked on a series and then later that series, for some reason, never got out? Um. I don't think so. I don't think that's happened. Mm -hmm. I know there's been occasions where they've worked on a series and just it just for some reason it fizzles or it didn't go with the test audience or whatever. Hmm. No, I have not experienced that and I hope that I never do. <laughs>
kind of stupid and <laughs> and hyper-ish, like like uh, Media in Bacchano, a play character in Bacchano, who's very high pitched and hilarious and stupid. <laughs> Please check it out. She's, I love her. Um, was there any character that was like really hard for you to portray? Um, many characters are hard at different times. It just depends on what is going on with them at the moment. Like Winry, her voice is easy, it's comfortable, I can do it easily, but then she breaks down into tears and has these very emotional moments. That's hard. Being crazy, <laughs> Winry, that's easy, um, relatively. Um, Haruhi was difficult, Haruhi Fujioka, in the beginning because the voice was very new and I knew that there was a lot riding on the show and people were expecting a lot out of that character in particular and she had to sound a certain way, so I was pretty paranoid about nailing it, and then eventually it just became second nature. See, so it was hard at the beginning and then not so hard later. Uh, yeah, so I guess every part is hard and easy. It just depends on what the character's going through. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I know a lot of people probably ask a lot of you and other voice actors what your favorite character is, but what I want to know is, is there a character that you eventually like really hated doing or you really didn't like, like your least favorite character? Uh, you know, this seems familiar. I feel like I just answered this, but uh, I don't think so. I think I love working. <laughs> it's like, yay, I get to go be a character. No, I mean like a year after the fact or, a, or two Oh, like I used to like them and now I don't? Yeah. Mm, nope. <laughs> no, I like them all. They're fun. Yes. Uh, from what I've heard and understand, they're going to be remaking the Full Metal Alchemist series. Mm -hmm. um, will you be reprising your role as Winry in that? Um, I'm not really sure, I imagine, uh, if you didn't know, and remake isn't quite, it's more like a retelling, reimagining, re yeah, so they're not saying that anything was wrong with the first one. First one, great, awesome, we all love it, am I right? Yeah. 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 Yes, it is exactly this attitude that they want to feed, they're like, people love Full Metal Alchemist, we need to give them more Full Metal Alchemist. And instead of just making up stuff to, the, like, to tag on to the end of what's already happened, they're going back and telling the story again and sticking closer to the manga. The, uh, so that's what it's about. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be cool. Um, Funimation has acquired the rights to stream the show live, not live, but like 24 hours or a couple days or something after it airs in Japan. So you don't have to download it illegally. I repeat, <laughs> you don't have to download it illegally. You can watch it for free and legally online. So go to Funimation.com and poke around on there and find their video page, see uh, when it's airing. It's called Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I don't know anything about dubbing it, not a clue, but I hope that we do and I would love to play Winry again. Yes, sir. The technical term for that is a retelling. A retelling. Or, or or sometimes when it is totally because they're not totally started over from scratch. If mm -hmm. they started over from scratch, mm -hmm. then it's called a reboot. Oh, well, like I call it awesome. Like, like like Star Trek. This new Star Trek is a reboot of the of the series. Cool. I'm excited about that too. Yay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hulu is our friend. Um, sorry. But it's an alien pot to take over the world. Which is a good thing. Um, <laughs> do you ever call any of your fellow host, member, host club members in the studio man or bro? Oh! <laughs> uh, probably man. I use that word a lot. Like, cool man, that's pretty much a phrase I use while directing when they do a good job. Cool man, next line. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, how do he use rubbing off? You look so cute. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm Han from Namu Namu. Uh, yeah, if you want to learn more, um, it's... Go to the, yeah, yeah at the table in the dealer room. <laughs> yeah. So cute. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, anyways, uh, my question is, um, I noticed that um, voice actors, they seem to have, like, um, I don't know, they have a lot of, like, inner action, like, I don't know, they, um, I don't know. Within the show, they have like um, a whole bunch of these actors, and then in a different show, they have like this 
an actor. So do they like um, have the same agent or is it like um, a thing of like chemistry and they hire them based on that? Um, actually, the, so basically why is it that you hear a lot of the same people from show to show? Yeah. It's because um, it's a very small industry. You'd think because there's so many conventions and stuff. Anime just has to be huge, but really it, stuff is only dubbed in about four places in the country. Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, and New York. Oh, Those are the main places. And then there's also a place in Canada. But, Vancouver. In Vancouver. But we can't really uh, go from studio to studio. So if shows come from Funimation, which right now it is producing the most and distributing the most, it's going to be the, those Dallas area actors. And sometimes the Houston folks come up and work for us. And randomly, someone from LA or New York will come over and do a guest appearance. But that's why. It's the people who live in that area. And it's a really hard job, to be honest. It takes a lot of, uh, it's just a special skill. I've met some really incredible stage actors, but you bring them into the booth and they just can't bring that character to life or can't get the timing down. So when you find somebody who can do it, it they're golden and you keep them around. And we keep casting them because they're good. Yes, they're yes. good at what they do. So. Is there any news of um, Higurashi Nakukoro ni, ni Kai coming out and who the voice actor of Hanyu Kachan is? Wow, is there an English translation? Um, is? <laughs> um, I'm as sick of this cry sorrow. I've never even heard of that show. Basically, it's a show where everyone dies in it and then it restarts a every few episodes and they're all alive again and they die and they live again and die and live again. I have no clue. Because it's a time loop. I have no idea. So it's a perfect world. Yeah. I, I wish I could answer your question, but I don't know. Sorry. Anyone else have questions? Oh, you're at the camera, so you can't leave. What is your question? Um, on the lines of the New Football Metal series, if you couldn't reprise your role as Winry, who else would you like to voice act for? <laughs> I love Al. I've always loved Al from the very beginning when I auditioned for the show. That's the character I wanted the most. No, but I think Aaron's great and hopefully he gets to keep doing it. Um, a girl that I'd like to play. I think there are, I, think, I guess it doesn't have to be a girl. I think there are some characters that uh, nobody knows yet. In like the... Ron Fun? Yeah, Ron Fun. Isn't she with the little buns She's on her the... Head? She's the, she's right no, there. she's the, the bodyguard. <laughs> she's the bodyguard, the bodyguard of that you. prince. Yes. Yeah, she might be cool. She seems cute. I like her. What do I think of Lust being Winry? Oh, they, they asked Laura Balin if she was interested in being. Laura. <laughs> you had a reference. I'm confused by this question. Uh, uh, Laura Bailey said she, if if she could, could be voice, someone else, she wanted to be Winry. Oh, I think that's pretty awesome. I think uh, I love Laura. She's a fantastic actress, and I think that she would definitely do Winry justice. So I'm perfectly. She also said not to tell you. Oh well, you know what? You know what? When I auditioned for Full Metal Alchemist, I was still new. I'd, the only thing I'd ever done uh, was some little stuff in Case Closed and Hiono and Spiral. They bring me into audition for Alchemist, and I read for uh, Hawkeye, Rose, and Al. Oh. Winry isn't in the auditions. It's Hawkeye, Rose, and Al. And uh, after that, Justin Cook, who at the time uh, was, I guess, going to be directing it, he was at least <coughs> casting the show, brought out scripts from the show on the spot. They, didn't, they hardly ever do this. And had me read for lust. So yeah. they are lower baby. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so I read it for her a couple different ways. One of the ways she had a British accent, because why not? Because um, I like them. But I didn't get less Laura did, and she's rad. But if we could switch places, that would be pretty cool. Try to less. Um, what's something that less says? <laughs> well, if it isn't the full metal pip squeak. Well, if it isn't the full metal pip squeak. <laughs> Laura Balin did Winry and you did Lust for Brotherhood? That, okay. <laughs> I don't know, the fans would like it. Because I don't think, I think there would be a, there'd be a riot. 
Any other questions? We still have plenty of time. Do you want to be a chicken? I don't. <laughs> That's it stuck in my hand for a few days. Um, for, um, in Bacano, uh, how do you like your role yeah. and um, like, how do you like interacting with everybody else? It's such a crazy cast. Crazy right? show, yes. Well, in, Jap in Japanese, in Italian, Bacano means like a loud noise or craziness. Uh, so it's a perfect title. I loved that show. I wish it could have been longer. I, you guys really need to check out the show. There's so many, so many characters, and I play, uh, there's no lead, really. There's no lead character. There's so many crazy storylines going on at once, and how they all intertwine, and they jump back and forth uh, between different years in time. Uh, but my character runs around with this guy named Isaac, and they're both stupid. But, uh, <laughs> what's that? Like a Bonnie like, and Clyde. Kind of like Bonnie and Clyde, but stupid. Um, <laughs> stupid Bonnie and Clyde, uh, but they're really awesome. And so she's just blonde and, um, Isaac, I have a question. Like, that's what she says all the time. And, incredible! So you just... I loved it. I was so sad when it was over. Oh, I had a blast. There's some shows that you just know when you go into rehearse, uh, rehearse, record, like, I'm going to have fun today, period. It's just going to be a good time. Cause, and she never had, like, this is the episode where Miriam loses her mind and breaks down crying and it's awful. There's none of that. <laughs> it's all just silly, silly silliness. So, good times, Bacchano. Yes! Uh, just out of curiosity, have you ever considered branching out into voicing uh, original animation? I would love to. I would love to. Um, I'm a big cartoon dork uh, since I was a child. Yes. What, so. what, ser uh, what series would you like to voice if you could? Like maybe like Wolverine and the X-Men or... Uh, oh, you mean like be in a, what type of cartoon would I want to be? Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, probably... I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Ben 10? I don't know, everybody's already so awesome in Ben 10. Like, I know people in that show. I don't want to take their part. I don't want to take Kari Waldron's role. Uh, you, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I would love to be in any show, but I, I probably would enjoy a show like Ben 10 or like Avatar or like uh, something with a story, you know, because that's more like anime and more what I'm accustomed to. I don't know how great I would be at something crazy like Fairly Odd Parents or Spongebob Squarepants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Spongebob. Okay. Um. So I know you're an editing and I was wondering if you know about the recent evidence in the manga. Evidence? <laughs> recent yeah. evidence? Because I knew of like old ev evidence. What's Spoilers. the reason? Like a Spoiler alert! Who cares if you don't want to know what I want to know? Full <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. She means. She means no, I want to hear. What like, um, At breaks, when Rinri has to fix Ed's um, animal, he gets really nervous, and to like to stop himself from being nervous, he like yells out um, chemicals and all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so he's into her too. Like where in the anime, all he can think about is like save my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Get my arm back. <laughs> it's both of your sides. <laughs> I did kind of have a soft spot for Al. Also. I think Ed is actually taller than my brain. He does grow, I know that in the manga. He, he does grow he does grow in the anime too. There's one spot where Win reacts. Yes, I remember she says you've grown. You're, yeah. yeah. That's you had to adjust out. your auto mail. Yeah. One inch. Yes. Um as I said before. Salty fan. Uh, you were great, as Excel, But uh, Thank you. if you could could have played any other role in Salty Ray, what would you have played? Um, I don't think. I remember I really thought that Rose was awesome when I auditioned, and Colleen and I compete for parts a lot because our voices are very similar, but. After having done the show, I wouldn't want to be anybody besides my character. Because I love, I just love her story arc. I love what happens to her. I love what she goes through. It was really hard work playing all that stuff. But uh, it was great. I would, don't want to be anyone else except her. Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 
Okay, um, I was wondering about um, One Piece. Yes. I know that you guys had to start at Skypiea where four kids left off, and mm -hmm. then you did the game, and then the eighth movie. I was wondering, and then I heard that all the episodes, you're like, you're going back and forth. Why is it so out of order as far as well, why you're working on it? We picked up where four kids left off at the time because it was still airing. So we had to continue to make episodes uh, to air on television. And that was very difficult because uh, four kids had a certain way of saying certain things and names that they had changed. And even if they were quote unquote incorrect, they were what had been published in the manga. And Toei didn't want their to, they wanted things uh, to have continuity. So we would go through and record the wrong name and also the right name so when it's finally released on DVD, it will, you know, say Shandora instead of Loftra, things like that. Doro instead of Zolo. Exactly. Um, so that, it took, tw it felt like it took twice as long there at the beginning. So we did that um, up until whenever, and then I think we even made episodes that they stopped airing. So right when I started directing is when they're like, no, I'm not going on TV anymore. Um, I did direct some of One Piece. I still do. Uh, and then we jump back to the very beginning. So we started at the beginning. Oh, the movie you mentioned. I think the reason we did Movie 8 is because it was the most recent film in Japan at the time that had already been released and that we could get all the materials for. So we did that one. Um, and that was nice because I got to get a, a jump start on, <laughs> on part of Vivi. Uh, the game happened when it happened just because it's totally separate. Like Funimation, our name may be on it, but we didn't dub it. Uh, Chris Sabat, everyone knows Chris Sabat, voice actor, he has his own studio. He does all kinds of uh, uh, video game sound design and stuff like that. So uh, the game company hired him, so he got all of us uh, to be in the game. That's how that worked. And then we started the show, and we've worked all the way up through season one, two, two, we're all the way through Alabasta now. I think we actually we're all we're caught up. Yeah, yeah. We are caught up. So hooray and pretty soon. When is it going back on TV though? That we are not even in control of that. That is up to Cartoon Network or some other network that would want to air it. So we don't have any I mean all we can do is say please buy this, but if they don't want to, they won't. But, um. What is your favorite type, uh, favorite type of character to? What would be your I basically your ideal character to uh, voice? Uh, my ideal character. I don't have just one. I like them all. Sometimes it's nice to go in and play a character that uses just your re your regular speaking voice. That is the ideal character because it's not hard on your voice whatsoever, and you never. A part where I just talk and I never have to scream. That is the ideal, <laughs> the ideal role. But parts I like the most, I can't say. I love that I can go in on any given day of work and play the crazy person, play the tomboy, play the calm one, play the emo one, whatever, all in one day. That's what makes each each personality so great. Is that I don't have to be just that. I can well, be all kinds of things. My question was, do you like prefer to play the dumb blonde or the or the crazy person? Or no, they're all equally fun because they're all parts of me, but not me. <laughs> well, I'm not blonde, so I'm not offended. Yeah, but you should take it up with the blondes in the room. Mm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, I was wondering if you could possibly do a typical Winry line. A typical Winry line? Or, you know, whatever kind of Winry line you really like from the series. Um, How about the one where she Al, let go of your brother. Alphonse, let go of your brother. About if you don't drink this, you're always gonna stay as small as a bean or something. I don't remember. See, here's something, you guys. We record it and we say the line like max three times. If, hopefully, hopefully that's all it takes to get it right. And then that's all. We never have to memorize them. We don't take the scripts home. We see them for the first time when we record them. Then you watch it on TV and you buy the DVDs and you watch them and you watch them and you memorize them and you act out the scenes with your friends, which is totally rad. 
So when you go, can you say that one line from episode 17 when Winry does the thing with the thing and the other thing? And I'm like... Do the lines again. That's what I do. When they're like, do Winry, I go... Because that's all I can remember. Also, we recorded Full Metal Alchemist in 2004. And then, uh, and 2005, we wrapped in like March. And then we did the movie many, many, many months later. So it's been a while, guys. What about the OABs of Full Metal? Oh, yeah, good. Um, thank you for bringing that up. The OVAs, original video animation. Uh, or OAV, original animation video, whichever, uh, are coming out of Full Metal Alchemist. They are hilarious and awesome. Uh, in Japan, they were out for like the Full Metal Alchemist experience at their you know, Universal Studios type place. Yeah. So they're small, about eight minutes a piece. A uh, really cool one is um, like everybody as kids in a more modern world oh, yeah, setting. And then there's one that's like the cast party, like everybody, everybody in Full Metal Alchemist being crazy. Then there's uh, some other ones, but they'll all be coming out on a DVD, all, all of them on one DVD soon. I'm sorry that I don't have the date memorized. That's what Funimation.com is for. Is it dubbed or subbed? Uh, both. I'm assuming okay. it will be both. It is dubbed, because we dubbed it. <laughs> we did dub it, yeah. Can you redo the lines, please? Hold on. <laughs> They blow my mind. They encourage me to be a better performer. Like both Laura and Brina, who are here, some of the most talented people that I know, and they're so versatile. But I think both of them would agree with me in saying that uh, Lucy Christian is just the most amazing voice actress Yay! that I know. Uh, Monica Rial is also rad too. But um, <laughs> we are we're all like big Lucy fans. I. I've adored Lucy since before I was a voice actress. I just think I love her also as a person. I really admire who she is and what she believes in and what she stands for and her work ethic and her talent and Lucy. Thank you. <laughs> you should join her, uh, her group on uh, MySpace. I love Lucy dot 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 Christian. I just tell her when I see her that I love her, so it's all good. What's that? All right. Um, my question is, um, have, have you ever, uh, oh no, no, is it, what's the, one of the craziest things that happened at any, anime convention you've gone to? Okay, craziest thing that's ever happened at any anime convention I've ever gone to. Um, I was at Animazement last year. I go to Animazement in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. This will be my fourth year. Love that convention. And they have tons of Japanese guests, which for a crazy fangirl like me is awesome. Um, last year they had Kotomo Mitsuishi, who is the voice of Sailor Moon. Oh, oh. oh my gosh, people, you have no idea. I was losing my mind. I think uh, yeah. I, I hadn't, I don't think I'd seen her yet, you know, like in the green room or anything like that. And they put us up on a stage that is about this size, just a big table. And uh, we're all sitting in a row, and it starts with all the Japanese guests and then the American guests, and there are like five of us, 20 of them, it feels like. And uh, we can see on uh, the screen, they're videotaping us so that people in the back can watch, and they have screens, and one happens to be hanging down right in the middle. So I can't watch her this way, but I can see on the screen to, you know, what the audience is seeing. And as they're going down, and all the Japanese people are really like, hello, and they introduce themselves, and they speak better English than I speak Japanese, and they say, you know, thank you for being here. But I don't know why, but 
we as American voice actors, we will do our voices, you know, when you ask us to at panels and stuff, but we would never think to come up and during opening ceremonies be like, I'm Winry Rockfell. Like, uh, we just don't do that. But that's totally how they introduce themselves. They say their name and who they are, and then they do a line of one of their characters. And she totally does like the Sailor Moon, like call out thing, and I'm watching her on the screen. I about, like, pee my pants. <laughs> I am not kidding. I think my mom has a picture of me, like, totally losing it. Like, my hands were shaking. I've never experienced this before. I cannot describe it to you. I don't even know why. I mean, like, I knew I was a fan and all, but my gosh. I totally had a fangirl moment. So that was really awesome. And then later I got to meet her uh, in the green room, and she's this nicest woman, and met her husband and her daughter, and we folded origami together. <laughs> I'm an origami nerd too, that's like my other nerdy thing, and uh, so that's probably the craziest, I guess. I'm not a very crazy person, but that was that was crazy for me to meet her. So, so origami, cartoons, and... Um, yeah, I'm a big dork. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hi. Um, hi. If you uh, could work... Sorry. Did I just yeah, stood up to the mic just a little bit. Um, if you could work with any voice actor that you haven't worked with yet, who would it be? Work with a voice actor I haven't worked with yet. Um, you know, I've been in some shows. Have I been in a show? Uh, mostly a lot of the LA folks that I haven't had a chance to work with, like um, that I know, but I haven't worked with, like uh, Kari Walgren and uh, Yuri Lowenthal, Johnny Young Bosch, uh, people that I've known for years now. And I think I've been in some of the same shows as Johnny, but I haven't got to work with him, either direct him or play opposite him. So him or Yuri or Kari would be awesome. I'm not, you probably might not know the answer to this since I'm not sure what um, part of One Piece is currently being um, dubbed at Funimation, but do you think that Vic Mignogna would be a good choice to play the character Brooke in One Piece? I couldn't answer because I haven't seen any of the current One Piece. I can barely keep up with what we've got going on because we had at one point four people directing One Piece at one time. Well, this was, to like, this, this was I know who he is and I know what he looks like and I understand that like he's a musician. But I couldn't answer that question as a director because I haven't seen anything that the character does, so. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, given the opportunity to put, um, how would you voice act Ai-chan? Oh my gosh, I would give that role to somebody else. <laughs> Gosh, it would be very high and super. I don't know. <laughs> um, hi everybody! Welcome to Kawaii Con 2009. Yeah. How was your most memorable or like funnest blooper you did? Funnest blooper. I love it when uh, the people that I'm directing do the do the blooping and we save it and put it on DVDs like Oron. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. So we have just ten minutes, maybe nine minutes. So I'm gonna get through the people that are up here, and if we still have time after that, then we'll take a couple more questions. Um, on YouTube, I see you sing Motherland a lot from Crystal K. Is that one of your favorite songs? I think it's a beautiful song. It is one of my favorite songs. I think I just learned it because it was. Full Metal Alchemist related. Yeah, because it's one of my favorite songs. Too. She's a remarkable singer, so I, yes, yes is the answer. Um, it's okay if you don't remember this or anything, but could you sing that song that Hiyono sang? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Outside the window, kira 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 ki, a shooting star streaks, kira 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 ki. The moon glows brightly, yura 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 di. Napping so peacefully in the ocean of the stars. Then somebody came along and waved their special magic wand, spreading the magic of love to all in a time of bright colored dreams. Yay! <laughs> and then there 
there's more, but it's really stupid. <laughs> Have you ever met any of your uh, counterparts? Have I, I have not yet, and I'm so disappointed. I really want to um, meet somebody who's played the same character as me. I've met some people who've been in some of the same shows, um, but I have not met anybody yet. I'd love to meet anyone who's played any role that I've ever done. That would be awesome. Mainly Maya Sakamoto, who was <laughs> Um, uh uh, this is kind of a weird, random question. Um, in if a character was real in real life in Naruto, who would you go out with? Who would you want to go out with? In <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, it was just popping in my head. Are there any that aren't like twelve? <laughs> Sanji. <laughs> um, are there any? But in Shippuden, they're older too. Oh. Uh, are there any that like aren't ugly? <laughs> I'm a boy and I beat people up. <laughs> Believe it, like, I don't know. I'm Sasuke and I'm emo, like, I don't know. I'm Naruto and I eat things. <laughs> Sexy, no jutsu. Like, I really, I know, I know how to make fun of Naruto. I don't know anything else about it. You seem like such a happy and bubbly person, but like, um, how do you portray sad scenes? Like, do you think of something? Or... Yeah, that's usually what it takes. Sometimes you can use just what's going on. Like, normally the stuff with Winry, all I had to use was what was there, like what was actually going on, and just put myself in her place. Other times, just because sometimes it's hard to be all that focused on what's going on in the show. Um, that's you. Yeah, you just kind of dig up something uh, personal to use, and uh, and go from there. But other times you can just really spend some time in the booth because it's nice. It's just you and a director and an engineer. It's not like being in a play where there is like a whole audience full of people, and it's like you must cry now. You know, everyone is watching. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, but in the booth, it's it's different. So uh, that's usually what it is, either what's going on in the episode or you just dig up some personal sad thing. Yes, ma'am. At this moment, could you please sing an excerpt, an excerpt from uh, the ending theme of One Piece movie? Oh my gosh. That song is so hard. Um, <laughs> if you didn't know, uh, we dubbed the song Compass from movie eight, One Piece movie eight, and uh, I actually adapted it myself. And it's Vivi's song, so we thought, you know, Vivi should sing it. And on the DVD release, it didn't make it on there. Funimation was in the process of moving to a different building, and it just kind of didn't happen. And they're like, it'll be on there for the Blu-ray. So it, uh, it did finally make it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is like, dance, monkey, dance! <laughs> There is something here I want to protect. Here I will grow strong, for this is where I belong. So I stand with my fist clenched tightly once again and watch you sail away. That's the beginning, it's really long. <laughs> note, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, to end it on. I am headed, I believe, out into the lobbyish hall area to do some signing, and in this room after me, it should be uh, Travis Willingham. Yay! Travel. Travel Willingham. <laughs> Whoever that is. So, uh, thank you all for I'm Caitlin Glass, and you're watching IggyCon TV.
you tell us a little bit about what you've been working on lately? Yes, I can. I just finished up Oron High School Host Club. I say just, it's been a couple of months, but uh, that's the last thing I directed. I'm working on a show right now, of course I can't talk about it. Um, so that's what I've been directing, I've been Oron, and otherwise voice acting, I am working on Gunslinger Girl 2, or Season 2, I play Triella. Um, One Piece, we finally got to the point where my character Vivi shows up. I'd already played her before in the movie about a year ago, and now we've finally reached the episodes where her character appears, so I'm having a lot of fun uh, playing her and her uh, counter-personality of Miss Wednesday. Um, I feel like I'm doing some other shows, but I can't talk about them. Darn. Sorry. Oh, I guess uh, Bacchano. We just wrapped on Bacchano. I'm not even sure when that's going to be released, but I loved, loved, loved that show. It's a, bit, it's a period piece that's set between the years of 1930 and 1932, and also like 1780 or 1760 or something, so it's this great kind of mobster, alchemist, immortals show. Uh, I loved it, so just finished that also. Great. How was your experience directing Oran, and had you directed anything before? I love directing Oran. It is my favorite show that I've ever worked on as a director, as an actor, period. It's one of my favorite uh, anime that exists, so it was wonderful uh, to be a part of it. Um, before Oran, I had directed Suzuka about a year before, maybe less than a year before, um, in its entirety. That was a 26-episode uh, romantic high school sports comedy type show, comedy drama. Um, besides that, uh, I worked on One Piece and also Case Closed and helped out other directors on various shows like Hell Girl, Negama, Rumbling Hearts, things like that. Great. What was it like to direct yourself? It was a challenge at first. Um, it took maybe the first contract, which was nine episodes or so, to really get into a rhythm, how it was going to work, and get in a rhythm with my engineer uh, and learn the pace that's best for me while directing myself. So uh, the great thing about it, though, is it saves a lot of time. Because normally, say if I were directing you and you did a take, and if there's something in it that I wanted different, I would have to take the time to explain that to you, make sure you understood it, and, and do it again. And maybe you didn't understand, and then you'd have to get notes uh, again. But as a director, directing myself, acting, usually when I hear it come out of my mouth the first time, I know that I didn't like that and I'm going to want to do it again. Or maybe in playback, I go, I didn't like that. But no explanation is required. I just tell them, let's do it again. I do it again and know what to do. So things move pretty quickly uh, once I got the hang of it. And now, I love it. It's really fun. The hard thing is going back to being directed by someone else, especially if it's with an engineer that I've worked with. Uh, then it's tough to remember, oh, someone else is telling me what to do, instead of uh, I'll get three words into a line and then just stop because I don't like what I'm doing, I think it's bad. I go, oh no, Mike's directing me, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> Great. Um, okay. How long have you been working in the anime industry and how did you get started? I started at Funimation about five years ago. This is my fifth year. I'm in my fifth year. By the time YukiCon rolls around, I'll be working on year six. That's crazy. Uh, I got my start as a theater student. I had less than a semester left of college before I had my degree. And I had a friend who uh, was, still is, uh, an engineer there at Funimation. He's like, hey, uh, you like this anime stuff? Come and uh, I'll give you a tour. I'm like, cool. So he gave me a tour and I met a director who on the spot gave me an audition, if you can call it that. It was really like, here, get in the booth, say this line. And I thought it was just, a, oh, here's a girl on a tour. Let's, you know, let her do something. When I came out of the booth, uh, they gave me a job. And three days later, I was working on the very first episode of Case Closed. And uh, I just haven't left.